From her childhood in a small, middle-class town in Brazil to the upper echelons of the modeling world, here is the stunning transformation of Giselle Bündchen. Bündchen never expected to become a model. In fact, she was raised in a small town in Brazil and didn't even know modeling was a job. She told the Wall Street Journal, I wanted to be a volleyball player. On July 20, 1980, Bündchen was born to a bank clerk and a university teacher, according to Lifetime. Her childhood was spent in a small, three-bedroom, white brick house in a tiny town with her five sisters. According to her, she and her sisters got along like six best friends, and she claimed she was a real tomboy as a child. Fond of climbing trees, and running around outside, it's easy to see why modeling wasn't initially in her plans. Bunchen's upbringing was Roman Catholic, and she was raised speaking Portuguese as her first language. She also has some German heritage from both parents, and she apparently learned a little German in school. Bunchen has been described by interviewers as speaking a mile a minute. As it turns out, the supermodel has always been highly energetic. She told Vanity Fair, I was extremely hyper when I was a kid, like bouncing off the walls. I think that if I was in America, they'd probably give me medication. While Bunchen's energy might have been a lot to handle for her parents, it's clearly a quality that's helped her get where she is today. Her twin Patricia told the publication, Unlike me, Giselle was very talkative and she wasn't afraid to be away from home for some time even when she was little. Sounds like she showed signs of being a real personality even from an early age. Because of her excessive energy, Bunchen's parents put her in lots of classes as a child. Ballet, gymnastics, and, you guessed it, modeling. These days, Bunchen is known all over the world as being a gorgeous supermodel. But it wasn't always this way. In fact, she revealed to Vanity Fair that as a child she struggled to get used to her striking looks. She explained, I was tall and really thin. The kids in school called me olive oil and seracura, which is a bird with really skinny long legs. While this classic model look eventually led to Bunchen's hugely successful career, she was bullied and ostracized for her unusual appearance as a kid. Bunchen confessed that she also disliked her nose. As she once explained to the Wall Street Journal, she thought she was strange looking. Instead of focusing on her looks, Bunchen worked at getting good grades, making good friends, and taking part in sports. She was even captain of her school's volleyball team. Bunchen enjoyed her childhood, even if she was a little self-conscious. She added, If I were told I could come back as anything, I would have chosen the same life, the same family, the same experiences, the same friends. Bunchen's normal childhood was cut short when she was just 14. She was on a school trip to Rio when a modeling scout spotted her. After that, Bunchen dropped out of school and dove into the world of modeling, according to Vanity Fair. In a letter to her younger self for CBS This Morning, Bunchen reflected on her meeting with the model scout. She said, To your surprise, a model scout approaches you because of your unique look. It turns out the bullies at school who tease you for being different are wrong. Bunchen also recalled moving to New York City two years later, not knowing English. She continued, In the beginning, jobs are scarce, and you'll have to learn how to manage your money so you can have enough to eat. At first, Bunchen did struggle to make it big. She told the New York Times, In the beginning, everyone told me, Your eyes are too small. The nose is too big. You can never be on a magazine cover. Of course, soon enough, she proved them wrong. As a teenager entering the modeling industry, Bunchen was essentially clueless. Despite having taken a modeling course, she had a lot to learn. She confessed to Vanity Fair that she had no idea what modeling was. But she soon learned that it was about becoming something other than just yourself. Even though Bunchen was new to modeling, she was hooked very early on. After years of putting up with bullying and name-calling, suddenly people found her attractive and beautiful. She admitted that it was a different standard of beauty. As her twin sister said, even though Bunchen was inexperienced, she was determined. Patricia recalled, Her willpower made her successful. She has never let the critics put her down, and this has never changed. Soon, Bunchen's hard work, perseverance, and thick skin paid off. More and more jobs started to come her way, and her career seemed to be on course to take off. I felt like I was at the right place at the right time with the right attitude. Once Bunchen found her feet in the modeling world, the jobs started coming in. Her first big break was through Alexander McQueen when she was 17, and Bunchen is grateful to him for it. She told Love magazine, The great thing about McQueen was that he wouldn't look at anybody's books. 
All he cared about was that you could walk in impossible heels. It was around this time that Bunchen became known as The Body. Another major moment in Bunchen's career came one year later when Big Magazine made her the focus of an entire issue. Bunchen believes that it was these early opportunities in the world of British fashion that catapulted her to stardom. She explained, 90% of the power people in fashion are British. I think people understood I could be cool after that. Soon enough, Bunchen was everywhere. In fact, her rise to fame in the late 90s is often credited with the end of the heroin chic fad. A few years later, she was the highest paid model in the world, according to The Guardian. For Bunchen, becoming a supermodel was both thrilling and a little dangerous. These days, she's known for her healthy lifestyle, but it wasn't always this way. She explained to The Guardian that early in her career, she was overly eager to do every job that came her way. The pressure soon became too much, and she started to experience panic attacks, and her lifestyle didn't help. She admitted, I was eating steak and fries every night. I was drinking a bottle of wine and smoking cigarettes and having a mocha cappuccino for breakfast. Bunchen's unhealthy lifestyle soon sent her spinning into a cycle of insomnia and anxiety. She finally realized she needed to make a change when she was 24, when she reached her lowest point. As she confessed, she even once considered harming herself. She said, What I realized was that I am creating this for myself. We are creating the lives we are living with our actions and we have a choice. Bunchen soon committed to a new routine of meditation, yoga, lots of sleep, and healthy plant-based food. And she hasn't looked back since. The first thing I do when I wake up is I just have a lukewarm water with lemon squeezed in. It helps wake up your body and your metabolism and it just kind of gets things started. While Bunchen was on the cover of just about every fashion magazine out there in the 2000s, she also graced plenty of tabloids. This was largely thanks to her relationship with superstar Leonardo DiCaprio. According to The Sun, the pair dated from 1999 to 2005. However, the relationship was definitely a pretty rocky one. As W revealed in 2002, they broke up at least once. At the time, Bunchen stated, No time for boys. There's nothing else to say. Then a few years later, there were rumors of marriage. As Bunchen revealed to Vanity Fair, the relationship did have its positives. She admitted, We were very young and we grew together in a lot of ways. In the end, Bunchen realized that DiCaprio didn't fit into her new, healthier lifestyle. In her memoir, Lessons, My Path to a Meaningful Life, she explained that as she cleaned up her lifestyle, she began to notice that DiCaprio wasn't keen on doing the same. She wrote, Was I alone in wanting to do some serious soul-searching while he stayed the same? In the end, unfortunately, the answer was yes. Part of Bunchen's healthy regime is a daily Buddhist meditation routine. As Love reported, she even has a tendency to quote Buddhist texts in everyday conversation. Meditation is a crucial part of feeling her best. In fact, without it, she wouldn't be who she is today. In a chat with People magazine, she said, Meditation has been a great tool for me in my life. It helps to quiet my mind and helps me see things more clearly. It brings a sense of peace to my day. It's a big difference when I don't, actually. I, I feel almost kind of like I feel like I'm playing catch up when I don't meditate. Over the years, Buddhism has brought Bunshin a greater sense of wisdom and healing, too. She added, I have been meditating since my early 20s, and I must say that words do not express enough the significance of its gifts in my life. Shortly after breaking up with DiCaprio, Bunshin met someone new, superstar quarterback Tom Brady. As the model told Love magazine, all of her friends had been trying to set her up. Eventually, she agreed to meet Brady on a blind date. She confessed, It was really like doing a favor for a friend. Bunchen had set aside half an hour for the date, but it ended up lasting three hours. In fact, as Bunchen confessed to Vanity Fair, she practically fell in love with Brady on that first date. She claimed, I knew right away, the first time I saw him. But you know, when I saw those kind eyes, I was... I literally fall in love, like, right away. I was like, what? Even though Bunchen had been happily single for a year prior to meeting Brady, she was totally smitten. Three years later, the pair married in a super private ceremony in Santa Monica. As Bunchen explained, the wedding cemented their already strong relationship. They'd been living together, and the ceremony simply made it a little more official. Bunchen had two children with Brady, Benjamin and Vivian Brady. For most parents, having children proves to be a momentous milestone in life. For Bunchen, motherhood was utterly transformative. She told Love magazine, It's a cliché, but there is no bigger thing. She also explained that having kids completely changed her perspective, adding, I don't want him to say his mom was a successful model. I want him to say that she took care of him, that she was a good person. 
Of course, adjusting to life as a mother wasn't easy. As she wrote in her memoir, When I became a mom, I kind of lost myself. It was like a part of me died. Bunshin had to get used to being responsible for someone else. She went on to say, I suddenly felt I couldn't do other things, and that was very hard for me. While she was thrilled, it was, as she put it, a shock. Bunshin turned 40 in 2020, and while she may be getting older, she appears to be doing it with her usual dose of grace and enthusiasm. To celebrate her birthday, Bunshin announced on Instagram that she would be planting 40,000 trees. She's carved out a reputation as a passionate activist over the years. She even became a global goodwill ambassador as part of the UN's environment program. As it states on the UN's website, with a uniquely global reach, Bunshin uses her influence to bring attention to our planet and how society can collectively work to protect it. She is often noted among the world's most generous celebrities. In an interview with The Guardian, Bunchen explained that the notion of aging doesn't faze her. She plans to enjoy life as she always has. She said, I mostly like to be outside with nature, doing something physical like surfing, horseback riding, I play volleyball, run around with my kids, or take my dog for a walk. Bunshin went on to explain that she had no intention of starting any new exercise regimes or diets to stop the natural aging process in its tracks. As she put it, It's important to do those things that really nourish you, benefit you, make you feel good. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.